Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we have Invest 94L and Disturbance 2 bring a big flood threat to the Caribbean as well as possible subtropical development next week. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltivits.com for Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. Black Arrow is Invest 94L. Purple is Disturbance 2 in the southern portions of the Caribbean. Here's our vorticity signature of both entities. You can see we have a circular structure for Invest 94L, but we don't have a closed low, so that's why we don't have a tropical storm at the moment. And then in the Caribbean, we have a stretched out elongated vorticity signature, so we don't have uh, an obvious closed low uh, for Disturbance 2, which is why it's also not an invest at the moment. So here is Invest 94L. As you see, it's moving slowly to the west. Uh, most of the convection is on the northern and western side of our developing low pressure system. The eastern side's devoid thanks to a lot of dry air in the region. We have a 30% chance of seeing development over the next two days and down to 40% uh, chance of development over the next seven days. Yesterday we were at 50%, so each day we're losing the ability for this system to potentially develop into a tropical named storm. In terms of where this is going, it's going towards the Caribbean islands, so we're going to see the spaghetti track guidance models bring it in this direction of the Lesser Antilles. Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Cuba, the Bahamas potentially. And in terms of intensity, the majority of the models now are keeping it below tropical storm strength uh, with a couple of models, as you can see, taking it into tropical storm territory, but those are becoming less frequent. Here's a close-up view of disturbance number two. It's a very elongated vorticity signature like we saw before and thunderstorm clusters all over the place so it's going to take time for this to consolidate and time is not on its side because it's going to be interacting with land in the next couple of days Nicaragua and Honduras especially it's got a 20 percent chance of developing over the next two and seven days and that's indicative we only have about 48 hours before this moves over over land and it needs to be over water to consolidate those thunderstorms into a tropical storm. And once it's over land, it can't do that. So here's the GFS model showing where this storm could go over the next couple of days. The black is 94L, purple is Disturbance 2. We have a broad area of uh, high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. Keep in 94L moving westward instead of moving out to sea, like we saw with the curtain and about a couple of other storms. Low wind shear environment for both systems, but dry air is dominating 94L, so that's why it can't develop. And we have a ton of moisture with disturbance too, but it's too much and it's not enough time for it really to consolidate. And we'll show you that on the models. As you see here, two days from now on Friday, October 18th, and it's already interacting with the northeast corner of Honduras and Nicaragua. Uh, so it's not going to have a lot of time really to get itself together. It's trying to. You can see the vorticity concentrating, but it's not quite there. It needs to look more like that nor'easter coming off the east coast of the United States, but even more concentrated. That's broad but has the structure of what we're looking for, and it's not there yet. The vorticity is still too weak and broad. But both show light wind shear environments, but again, too much moisture to consolidate for Disturbance 2, and too little uh, moisture, too much dry air for 94L as it comes through the Caribbean islands. Now, whatever... Uh, moisture 94L does have will be bringing some significant rainfall to the Caribbean islands, but the majority of the flooding is going to be over Central America thanks to the disturbance too and all its moisture. You do see 
three days from now, the one last gasp for possible development in the Gulf of Honduras from Disturbance 2, as that vorticity tries to consolidate just north of Honduras before making landfall with Belize. And then by the time we get to day five on Monday, the 21st, it's already crossed Central America and is now in the Eastern Pacific Basin. But we have an area of interest in and around Bermuda where we could see a potential subtropical storm form. We'll have the remnants of a nor'easter cold front coming through and a low pressure system could consolidate off of that frontal boundary and it's brought in nature here on the GFS model. It does have an upper level trough overhead which would allow for the uh, more, the air in the upper levels of the environment to expand, allowing air from the lower levels to contract and rise up into the upper levels. Wind shear a little too high at the moment to really sustain thunderstorm convection. And we see that comma shaped look. So it's still associated with frontal boundaries, at least on the model run. So that's why it's the potential for something subtropical to form, but not quite yet at least in terms of what we see on the models. In terms of sea surface temperature, they are above average as they have been all Atlantic season. You can see even the track of where Kurt was uh, as, and um, as it moved up into the middle of the Atlantic there. And then in terms of sea surface temperature themselves, they're right on the border. So it's right around that 80 degree Fahrenheit mark if it moves a little bit further to the north, still conducive for tropical development, even though it's less than 80 degrees, but you need really cold air aloft for that to sustain thunderstorm convection. And as we're heading into the cold, uh, cooler fall, that's possible uh, with very strong cold fronts coming off the east coast of the United States. So you see here, an area of vorticity does try to consolidate, but it's still as you can see on the vorticity structure here, associated with some frontal boundaries and nor'easter looking storm. So subtropical is possible, but as of right now on the model, unlikely. European model shows pretty much the same thing. It has a little bit more oomph for 90, for the disturbance too, just before moving into Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, so definitely still something to keep an eye on. That one keeps it over a water a little bit more instead of interacting with Honduras and Nicaragua around that bend. So we'll see. Here's the ensemble models for both the European and the GFS showing possible development for Disturbance 2, less likely for 94L, and maybe that subtropical storm tries to get going uh, as we get into the uh, next week as well. But as we said before, the biggest threat is going to be in terms of rainfall anywhere in the blues with Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. We're talking up to two inches and then in purple across Central America and into the yellows, we could talk upwards of a foot, especially in and around Belize and northern Guatemala. So we'll continue to track Invest 94L as it moves through the Caribbean islands looking less likely it's going to develop as it has too much dry air around it, but will bring what the little moisture it does have some good amount of rainfall to the islands as we go into this weekend. And then disturbance two, as it hooks around Nicaragua and Honduras towards the Gulf of Honduras, maybe we could see development just before landfall from Belize, but it's more likely this is just going to be a big rainmaker for Central America with possible development in the Eastern Pacific Basin. And then we'll also keep an eye on the uh, subtropical Atlantic, where we could see a potential subtropical storm form from an old frontal boundary. If any system does try to develop, the next name on the list would be Nadine. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, you can head down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button 
and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.